So let's click go for a run and see what happens. A whole bunch of windows come up. Now let's pause this for a second. I'm going to get rid of that just for clarity. So what are we looking at here? There's our ship. There's the range gate. Just for fun, there's the RCS polar plot on the sea surface. Here's the intercept corridor, which you probably have talked about before. There's the seeker antenna pattern. And it's sized so that it you know, has a beam on this imaginary wall at the origin of the, of the uh, coordinate frame. So, uh, but that is the in play. That is the actual seeker antenna pattern that's running in, the, in, the, in this simulation. For the antenna we chose, with the antenna parameters we chose. Again, I want to see, from a verification point of view, what does the antenna pattern look like? Without this, how the hell do you know? The, the seeker antenna pattern could be shut up completely wrong. Anyway, there's the range gate, and we have a, 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 a stop motion animation. I have an MG13 antenna, so one, I just <laughs> took pictures, still pictures of the antenna from minus 45 to plus 45, plus whatever it was, in half degree increments. So when the seeker, when the software is calculating the uh, seeker antenna pointing error, it goes and picks up the picture that co corresponds to the uh, uh, pointing error. So that's what that is. And here's the, the seeker antenna, uh, or excuse me, the jammer polarization angle. So you can see the whole thing happening at once. So let's watch what happens because this is not going to work. After two seconds, whoops, look what, see how the, uh, the seeker is in track mode and the uh, range gate is still on the ship. There is no range deception countermeasure here in this particular simulation. It's a CW jammer. So if this, the, that will cause the seeker to go into home on jam. And after a couple of seconds, if it doesn't find the target, it'll start range searching. And once it starts range searching, then we want to do cross pull. We've got to get this, shit, this skin echo, or excuse me, the gate off the skin echo. I know it sounds like I'm down a rabbit hole, but I'm going somewhere with this in a second. So what we can see is... We're doing cross pull and the range gate is on the ship and it's not going to work. When the polarization gets far enough away from cross pull, we'll see the thing will flip back into home on jam, and, but not for long enough. Let's see it go to green here. Go on now. You can do it. It's pretty far away. Should do. I think the RCS is just, nope, there it is. It's in home on jam. But look, we're at plus or minus six degrees. So it's going to reverse and it's going to go right back into track mode because the gate is still on the ship. So all that to say, by looking at this while you're watching the simulation go, you can kind of see what's happening. So in this particular case, what we see is abort. Now we can stop and save or we can abort and no save. Let's do abort and no save. So are you sure you want to do that? Yes, it is. I am. So let's redo it. But this time, I happen to know we would like to use a sawtooth waveform. So let's make the clockwise rate 300 degrees per second. And let's, let's set this at, let's hold our polarization for three degrees, three seconds, because that's long enough for the, uh, to get the range gate moving and watch. So let's watch what happens. We won't watch the whole thing, but it's, it, watch the difference. So now I don't have to click save, but I do recommend it. Let's just click single run and see what happens. Okay, same situation, except now we're going to stay at, at uh, 45 degrees here. We can see it happening for three seconds and watch that range gate start moving. While it is, while we're watching that happen, I'll tell you what else is looking at. So there's the antenna pattern. Here are the, these dashed lines, are the locations, the angles of the stable track points in azimuth. That's important because Crossbolt is going to try to push us onto those. So, and we'll see it happen. Uh, so... Anyway, that's okay there. Now we're moving towards cross pull and that will push it off. So, and that'll also cause the seeker to start moving, uh, the bo missile body to be pushed off. Minus 3.18 degrees. Oh, let's speed it up. If we click this fast, now the simulation will run faster because it's updating the, this animation more slowly. So there goes the antenna and the missile will shortly follow, pushed off in the wrong direction. Let's look at the right side panel. There's a bunch of things here, all described in the documentation. Things I think are important to look at. What's the power in the track gate? What's the power in the what's skin echo power? None, because the gate is off the skin. 
Now, look, the missile's heading in the wrong direction. That's nice. You can see what the model is doing. It makes physical sense. Here's the power in the uh, range gate or the uh, uh, noise gate. We can see if the signal goes below the detection threshold, that'll go into reacquisition. Here's there's a range estimator indicator, a range gate, so forth, depolarization from the sea surface. And uh, okay, so just to finish this off, uh, there's the see the reflection point in the sea surface because we're using a uh, curved earth propagation model. If instead we switch to a uh, sea swell model, you'd see a whole string of these as we saw in the picture before. Over here, elapsed time, time remaining, total time, because you can get some idea of how long this thing is going to run, it thinks. That's on here as well. But if you get rid of the wireframe animation, it'll run much faster, and you can still tell how much longer it's going to go. Found that useful. Also, you can speed it up by not, by not updating these stop motion animation things. If you click both of those off, you'll see this number, the execution time, drop. So anyway, uh, okay, I think that's pretty much click refresh. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff that shows real time what's happening in this simulation, depending on what you might be, or you can just dismiss it altogether. There's also the intercept corridor, this purple thing. We can see that in 3D. It's kind of busy, but interesting. If the missile were elevation guided, and there's an also one for the um, yeah, flight envelope here. There's another one for the missile, like where it can fly to in all planes. So let's abort that.